I'll bet you are trying to write the perfect chat GPT prompts in one shot. Well, there's a much better way and it's called priming. The reality is there is not one prompt to rule them all. With chat GPT priming, we interact with the chat for a couple of iterations and the result is much better. It also gives a bunch more flexibility to make changes or include variation without needing to start over. So let's jump in. You've all seen this. It's the most basic level one prompt. The result is great if it was still the year 2022. In this case, the response ChatGPT4 provides lacks continuity, specificity, direction, and it's generally just average. Let's see a level two prompt. This is the prompt everyone on YouTube and TikTok has told you to use. It tells chat how to act, it provides context, and it gives more specific direction. The stand-up comedy routine is more single-threaded and cohesive. Ultimately, the material is better. However, it's still not the best way to interact with ChatGPT. So let's move to a level three prompt and take it up another notch by interacting with the chat a couple of times before getting the output. So what I've done is I've said, please act as a stand-up comedian and a joke writer with more than a decade of experience, entertaining audiences of all ages. Here's an example of a joke style that I like. So next what I did is I went to YouTube and I grabbed this YouTube video summary tool, uh, which is a free Chrome extension. You can just grab it, um, drop it in, and then reload YouTube. And then what it does is it automatically transcribes videos um, that you show on the screen, and you can just pull them down. I drop it in here. At the very end, you can see I say, now please write me a joke in a similar style. And what it does is actually produce a pretty good joke. The whole thing isn't great, but there are definitely some nice pieces in here. That's what I consider a level three um, priming or prompting, right? So now let's move to level four, and this is going to get a little more complicated. So just kind of hold on to your hats here and we'll walk you through it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a prompt that analyzes jokes that I like, and I'll show you why I do this in a minute. Here's the prompt that I'm using. I will put these things in uh, the description so you don't have to hear me read them. But basically I'm saying that I'm taking a transcribed text from a joke that I like. I'm embedding it here. Can you please analyze this joke for me and tell me its component parts? All right. So what you can see it put out puts out here is component parts, introduction, initial observation, exaggeration, absurd suggestions, enlisting friends, strategy for moving the horse. This is a joke about moving a dead horse. I take that information, I take these component parts, and I'm going to move them into a table. All right, and I'll show you how to do that next. What you do to create a table, please create a table that breaks down a stand-up comedy routine into the following key elements, where each of these elements is a column, right? So actually, I took a different um, stand-up comedy routine from a different comedian and got these results here. Relatability, exaggeration, wordplay, etc. So then fill the table with 10 rows of data where relatability equals awkward family situations. So what happens here is you get this really nice table that breaks out a whole bunch of different comedy bit opportunities. I like using the table because you can go through and kind of pick and choose the elements that you like. And, um, and then you can make changes to those things and adapt your bit according to something that feels more right for you. So now I've got this nice little table. I can take that. I'm going to combine a couple of things here. I'm going to combine the style that I like, so that Nate Bargatze bit, and then I'm going to add the components that I want to frame the joke around, right? So here's how we do that. We go to the start. I'm going to provide you an example of humor I like. It comes from a stand-up comedy um, live performance. So this is very similar stuff that I said before. So there's some verbal nuances, etc. After you read the joke, please confirm you have fully ingested the material by responding red, and we'll proceed with the next step. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling ChatGPT that we're just going to process this, this information. We're not going to do anything with it yet. And then I drop in the text from the stand-up that I pulled from over here. Great. And so it gives me the response that it's read it. Cool. 
So now that I've done that, I say, now that you have a sample of the style of humor by which you should write, please act as a professional stand-up comedian and a joke writer with more than a decade of experience entertaining audiences of all ages. Again, I'm creating that persona that we wanted to use. Based on the style of humor, please write an original stand-up com comedy routine with the following components, right? And so I've taken these elements from my table and dropped them in here, and then it comes out with this response. And some of it's good and some of it's mediocre and some of it's throwaway, but what I can do now is I can edit this, and I've already done it, and I can jump over to the next variation and I change several of the variables for the components. So I had seven here, and then I move over, and now I've got five, and I've changed some of the, some of the stuff, and I get a different result. But it still has the comedic style that I like from before. So it gives me the same kind of feel, but it's changing the components, so I get a totally different experience here, right? And then I change the satire to dirty airplane seats as opposed to uh, what I had before, which was the travel industry, all right? And so for this variation, I get a whole bunch of other different options, and again, more material that I could combine and put together and, and kind of make my own as it suits my, my personal style. So that's what I consider to be at level four, now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is gonna be a level five, but that's gonna be a different video because it's way more involved. I like this a lot and I really recommend using chat this way so that you can get more out of it and you're not constantly creating new chats and kind of starting over and starting over. You can actually just create your variability within one chat once you've primed it properly. If you check back, I'll be providing more content like this as well as additional AI resources for your reference as the tools continue to evolve and eventually take over the world.